Welcome to Christian Warrior Training. My name is Keith. If you love Jesus and you love protecting your church, you're in the right place. You're amongst friends. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment. The algorithm loves it. All right. I have breaking news out of North Braddock, Pennsylvania, where a man with a gun tried to shoot a pastor giving a sermon today. This is super important for us to get into. But before we start, if you want weekly news and weekly tips about keeping your church safe and all the crime that occurs at churches over the past week, head over to ChristianWarriorTraining.com. I've got a newsletter that is solely based on teaching people how to keep churches safe. I also have free training for church safety teams and people that just want to keep their church safe. Again, at ChristianWarriorTraining.com, hit the training tab. All of my classes are free. You get a certificate after training. I suggest you head on over there. All right, let's get into this. A pastor in suburban Pittsburgh was not hurt after he was confronted by a man who pointed a pistol at him during a service yesterday, and that's according to the Pennsylvania State Police. Now, Glenn Germany was the pastor. He was delivering a sermon at Jesus Dwelling Place Church in North Brad. When a man walked up to him, pointed a gun, and pulled the trigger, but it malfunctioned. So the Pennsylvania State Police identified the suspect as Bernard Jr. Polite. He wasn't very polite, by the way. He's 26, out of Braddock. And this occurred at 1.09 p.m. Eastern Time, and it was caught on video as a service was being live streamed over the internet. Now, one of the th we'll talk about this in a minute, but one of the things I talk about is shutting off the live stream when an incident occurs and then taking it down. You're going to want that as evidence for the police, but you also don't want to give this person the publicity that they're seeking. Now, church members quickly jumped into action. They wrestled polite to the ground. Pastor Germany joined in the struggle and was able to help wrest the weapon away from the man's hands. In a Facebook post later that day, Pastor Germany wrote, Thank God for Deacon, Thank God for Deacon Clarence McAllister, the true God sent hero. All right. As with every single video I do where I show crime that occurs at a church, I talk about how to prevent it from happening in the first place. All crime starts in the parking lot, meaning the evildoer is going to have to come from the parking lot into the church. So you have layers of security at your church. Well, number one, you have a security team at your church, but you have different layers of security. You have somebody in the parking lot and they are looking for evildoers and wrongdoers in the parking lot. They often throw signs. Uh, they'll sit in the car and think about what they're going to do. They are sweaty, even though it's cold outside. They're nervous. They try to avoid contact with others. And then your second layer of security is at the door. We always have an armed person at the door. It doesn't have to be a visible weapon. It preferable. It's just concealed carry, and you look like a greeter. And as people come in, you greet them and welcome them to the church. You'll recognize many people and you'll recognize people that have beefs with other people. You'll recognize people that don't belong at the church that have never been there before. And they look very nervous. And it's separate from the nervousness of somebody that's trying to come to Christ, but is actually there to do harm. In that case, you can go ahead and start talking to them. And sometimes you can intervene right then and there. As an example, I had an incident like this where I saw the person that obviously had some uh, mental issues. And while we were talking, she was talking about how she wanted, the pastor was harming the children. And it was very obvious that she was there to probably do harm to the pastor. And so I redirected her outside and encouraged her to leave. What would have happened if she made it inside? We don't know, nobody knows. And so your final layer of security is gonna be in the pews somewhere towards the front where they can see somebody approaching the pastor. And sometimes it could be just to disturb the sermon that's occurring right now, or it could be something more malicious, like in this case, to try and shoot the pastor. In that case, you can tackle them. You can, uh, certainly deadly force is authorized in something like this when you see the handgun come out. God 100% intervened in this by making the weapon malfunction. And I thank God that he intervened and stopped that man from doing something horrible. The last thing, and I talked about this a minute ago, was that if you're the person that's handling all the audio visual stuff going out over Facebook and so different social media platforms, super important for you to shut off the live stream immediately. Let, let the congregation and security team deal with the threat. Get that shut off immediately because we don't want the publicity to go out to everybody. And sometimes people work in concert with one another and they use the live stream as intelligence 
as to what's going on so they can make decisions, uh, tactical decisions in attacking your church. So it's super important to turn that off. Now, you're not deleting it permanently. You'll want to download a copy for law enforcement for prosecution purposes, but you are going to make sure it comes off of social media platforms so that other evildoers working in concert can't use that information to continue an attack on the church or something like that. It's super important. I've been warning you for at least a year that something bad is going to happen at churches. And you can go back and look at my other videos where I talk about that repeatedly and things that you can do to protect your church. The Bible also says that we're going to be persecuted for our beliefs. And we know that that's going to continue to occur. So why should we not prepare for that? If you don't have a security team at your church, that's okay. Try to convince your pastor and your elders that it's important and that you need one. If you're a pastor and an elder watching this video right now, I was a cop for 30 years. I specialize in protecting churches now. I am telling you 100% you need a safety team. And I have everything for free to set it up over at ChristianWarriorTraining.com. Hit the training tab. I have downloads. I have manuals. I have everything you will ever need to set it up. Now, look, even if your church refuses to do a safety team, there is nothing wrong to connect with other like-minded people in your church. To do it on your own is ad hoc, not officially, but to take this training and to come up with plans and train together to stop something if it were to occur. We have got to protect our churches. Bad times are coming. Actually, bad times are here. And you need to step up and help protect your church. If you're watching this, you probably care about church safety. If your church safety team, or if your church has a safety team, I think now is the time to apply and start seeing what you can do to help out. That's all I've got for now. Remember the most important thing that you can do to protect your church is to remember your ABCs. Always be caring.